Hi, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com. So let's dive in and take a look at these types of uh, takeoff charts. And for your takeoff weight chart, and this classic CASA question is, you know, what is your takeoff distance required? Or can you take off safely in this takeoff distance? And then they'll give you some, some like an ambient temperature, they'll give you an elevation and a Q and H and ask you to calculate your pressure height. And then what you'll do is you'll come here and you'll uh, have to map it all out and see whether it's safe or come up with what is the takeoff distance available. So the first thing you're going to do is you need to come in at where the temperature is. So you're going to find the temperature on this little chart down here. And in this case, we've chosen 20 degrees. And I like to draw a vertical line the whole way up. Now, Second thing you need to do is calculate your pressure height and you're going to do that from the figures that they give you and in this case we've calculated it out at about 3,000 or just over 3,000 feet in pressure height. Now the other thing before we go off and we work out what exactly what our takeoff uh, distance available uh, required or available is, we also need to go, okay, are we within the climb limitations of the aircraft? Now you'll note here that they've got 4,000 feet. 5,000 feet pressure altitude and 6,000 feet pressure altitude. So in other words, what they're telling us is you know, way down below 4,000 feet, this isn't going to be a limiting factor on this chart. So they're only really concerned when you're up around this range. And all you do is you come in on the temperature, which you've drawn all the way up from the bottom. And if our pressure altitude was at 5,000 feet, then our climb limitation weight would be right there at about 60 kilos. If our pressure altitude is say 5,500 feet, which is roughly about there. Now pressure, our climb limitation would be about uh, 1,015 or 14. Now you do need to be deadly accurate on these CASA. Wants you to be deadly accurate. And that one there, see how I'm not quite in the middle? That wouldn't be accurate enough, right? So I, I don't know of any CASA questions that are asking about this part of the chart. So let's move on to the other part of the chart. Now, what we do is we come in at our temperature and, we, and then when we come up to our uh, pressure height that we've calculated, and we go straight across to the start of this box. Now you notice that each of these boxes, so there's surface, slope, ambient uh, wind component, and the takeoff weight, these first three all have what we call a reference line. So what you're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is you're going to come in, and you're going to stop at the reference line. And then you're going to go from the reference line to the condition that applies. So in this particular case, you can see we came in, we stopped at the reference line, and then we followed the shape of these predetermined curves that they've given to guide us, these dark lines. And we, um, we've gone up until we've met short dry grass line. So in this case, we have short dry grass. And then we go across and we exit that box, and we keep coming into this box until we hit the reference line. There's the reference line there. Okay. Now, then we have these predetermined lines which we need to follow the shape again. Now, see down here, slope, up and down. Now, remember that the CAO applies and tells you to ignore slopes of 1% or less. However, if CASA gives you a question where they say, given these conditions calculated, then you're going to need to include a slope of 1%. But if they give you a scenario where they say, at runway, at, at such and such an airport, runway 21 to 1% slope, blah, 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 calculate, you know, DODR, in that case, you would, the CAO applies and you would ignore it. What they quite often do is they'll give you uh, the runways and they'll give you a slope and um, that slopes down or up to the east or west and then they just give you the runway numbers and you have to work out whether that's an up or down slope by applying the runway numbers and that's where a lot of people come unstuck so be ready for that now in this case if it's an upslope you follow the line back up the two uh, percent or whatever number they give you 1.5 or two percent and then percent is a massive slope that's like a, a 20 meter rise over a uh, 1000 meter runway which is just massive and then what you do is you come across the next chart and, and to the reference line 
and then from the reference line you draw down until the condition so in this case we've got a headwind of 10 knots so we go from a reference line down to 10 knots and then we exit the box so again over here if we came into a reference line and it was a two percent down slope we'd go down until we're in line with the two percent down there and then we exit the box we come in and we go to the reference line and then we follow the shape of the curves down to a 10 knot headwind if it's 10 knot if it was 20 we'd follow it all the way down to 20 and then we exit the box in this last box excuse me <coughs> you then need to do is they're going to have given you an MTO or takeoff weight. Uh, sorry, not an MTO. They're going to give given you a takeoff weight. So they'll say, you know, that the empty plane weighs this much. You need this much fuel, this many passengers, and this much cargo. You add all those up, and in this case, I think what have we got around about 980 kilos. You come across until you hit the line exactly for that weight, and then you follow so until you hit the vertical line exactly for that weight. And then you follow the predetermined shape of these curves down until you exit. And that is weight, sorry, that is the takeoff distance available for that weight in these conditions. And that's how you use this chart here. This chart here is in the RPL PPL workbook and RPL PPL CPL workbook. And it is expected that you know how to use all of these charts. Now, for RPL and PPL, you do not need to know the echo loading system, but you do need to know everything else in the book. So Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, you, you take off both of your takeoff um, charts, so the four box type performance chart and the landing charts, and then this one. I'm Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com. I hope that's helped with your takeoff uh, performance charts.